Welcome everyone to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host, Scotty McCoy, and I have an alumni from Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. I have Roger Rose, and he played Steven in the movie. Hey, Roger, how you doing? Hey, hey, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, what's that behind you? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was just telling them the story about when I was uh, younger, and I was watching Friday the 13th, and uh, Jason Voorhees turned off the uh, power in the movie, and at the same time, exact same time, my power went out, and that was a little freaky. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <it's... laughs> so I have about uh, 10 questions for you. The first one is not related to Friday the 13th, but it's how did you get your start into acting? Uh, I only have nine answers, so pick one that you don't want. No, okay. um, uh, I well, it's actually it has to do. Uh, well, my, I can tell you as far as on camera, um, it, it it one of the main things that started was with Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. Okay. So um, uh, you know, if you want to, I don't know what your next question is. If it's to do with that, it's sort of to do. I mean, I always. Took, I studied and I did some other TV shows and movies and things of that sort. But um, this really gave me a really good start. Okay. Uh, and I'll, you know, you, I could tell you, or you could ask the next question, which could be about nudity. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, either way. <laughs> well, the next question I got is uh, that you told me via email when we were discussing about your appearance on Slasher Scotty that uh, you had a story about how you got a job to be a part of Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. So, do you want to let us know what that story is? Yeah, so as you were saying about how did I get to start as an actor, so uh, as I said, I was doing stuff, but I became the very first, I'm, I'm, I have a pretty decent career in voiceover. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm a leopard seal on Happy Feet. I'm the guy on CBS who goes, The Big Bang Theory and, and CIS <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. But right. I, I, started, uh, I started getting voice work in horror movies and, uh, and really cheap Roger Corman movies. And what I mean by that is I was the death voice for every male. And uh, a woman named Pat Music with the female voice. Her her daughter is uh, on um, uh, her, Mae Whitman, if you know who Mae Whitman is. Anyway, so <clears throat> excuse me. So we uh, were doing. We one of our first gigs was uh, Reanimator and Reanimator Two. I was every zombie like, and then uh, you know <laughs> someone getting killed and hit and whatever. Right. And then I started getting uh, Roger Corman films where I would have a shootout with all five of myself. So the you know because they would buy films from around the world, and so nobody spoke English. So I would put in all the uh, uh, different voices. One of my favorites is Savage Island with Linda Blair, where the guy from Hogan's Heroes, not not any of the big stars, but the the boss, you know, clink, right. clink, that guy. <laughs> it was him, and they would spend ten thousand dollars. They hire uh, her and him. Uh, the beginning of the movie, he, he goes, I killed your sister! And at the end of the movie, she kills him. It's yeah, And then the middle of the movie, it's a movie made in like Brazil or something. <laughs> and I do all the guys going, uh, uh. Anyway, <clears throat> it's a long story to get to. So I get hired to do Friday the 16th, part six. It already been shot. Right. And uh, I get into the thing, and, and Tom McLaughlin, who's, just a great guy. Have you had him on the show? Yes, I actually interviewed him last week, actually. <laughs> oh, he's just a wonderful guy. Yes. Very good sense of humor. So this is absolutely true. So I'm doing all the male deaths. So I'm adding in that scenario. Like there's one where uh, Jason squeezes the guy's head and his brain pops out. I, if I may, I'd like to do that for you right now. Yeah. Okay. This is Jason squeezing the guy's head and a brain pops out. I'm not Jason. I'm the guy. <laughs> Thank you. Try the beam. Anyway. Nice. <laughs> so uh, I try. So I said to Tom, as we're doing this, because he's directing me on all the different deaths, I said, boy, my dream is to be brutally murdered in a film. And, you know, and I've done, already had done some films and TV and stuff. And we're laughing and whatever. And again, this is not a made up story. So the phone rings for Tom. Tom gets it, talks to somebody for a minute, and hangs up the phone. And he looks up at me and he goes, I've always wanted to do this. Kid. I want you in my picture. <laughs> and Paramount had called, and they said that there weren't enough deaths in the movie, okay. that they had not enough Jason killings. So they gave him enough money to go to Griffith Park in Los Angeles and shoot uh, two more murders, okay. uh, me and Cindy as the couple, and uh, the drunk. Um, uh, b b b Martin, the caretaker. Um, uh, was it? Martin. Uh, Michael 
No, you're right. You're right. Yep. Yeah. So we had just the weekend to do it in Griffith Park. So it was my biggest thrill because I got to be murdered by Jason in a movie. And that's, uh, awesome. that's how I got the role. And as a result of, there's more to this story, which I can tell you, but as a result of that story, uh, after doing it and everything, I then did, um, uh, I had an audition for MTV VH1 as, an, as a VJ. Because okay. this was shot in 86, right? Yes. <clears throat> And in 87, I had this audition, and they said, tell us about your craziest job and audition, and I told that, and they hired me, and I became a VJ on VH1 for almost three years That's because awesome. of that story. That is awesome. Isn't that wild? That is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so when you did the voiceovers, did you do them during post-production, or like were you on set for any of them, them scenes, or like how did all that go down? No, all, all stuff was post-production. Okay. Uh, the idea was they would have whoever was getting murdered and then they would do like really loser screams or, or <laughs> death noises. And so then they bring me in. So as I said, uh, the movie had, it was already in editing, but uh, Tom had to go and shoot these two scenes and we shot it in the park in the middle of the night and we only had nighttime cause we, you know, they couldn't get a permit for daytime. Right. I'm sure everyone's told you that the script never says Friday the 13th. They, I'm sure they've told you what it says, right? Yes. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Part five was. Aladdin Sin. That's it. Yes, that's it. Yeah, and they, because they were afraid of being protested and things of that sort. Right. Um, I, I can tell you about the death scene, but um, uh, I will tell you one thing. Uh, I was lucky enough that uh, what's his name, Hayne Cotter, is that right? That's his name. Keen Hotter, yeah. Uh, guy, yeah. He. I think that was his last one that he played. Uh, Jason, if I'm, am I right? I don't. No, uh, Kane not actually sure. started in part seven. It was C.J. Graham in part six. Oh, see, that's why you know all this stuff. <laughs> well, whoever that guy was, because he he didn't really talk much to us. Right. Um, but we, I'll just tell you one thing. When they were killing us, uh, the way we were killed is uh, we were on a. Uh, people like to say I was on a motor scooter, but actually it was a moped. Okay. But, um, <laughs> uh, the the original way of killing us was we were going to be driving down on the moped. Jason was going to reach around with his machete, and then he was going to shish kebab us, and we were going to be hanging from the machete oh, while wow. the motor scooter drove away. That was the original way we were going to be killed. Okay. But uh, a light fell in a tree and caused a fire in Griffith Park, and that took about two hours to get out and right. fire department and all that kind of stuff. So we, we were very short on time to do this special effect. So Tom said, ah, let's just do it this way. So what he did is we were sh sitting on the uh, thing, but... Uh, Jason takes his machete and shish kebabs us. So the only way they could do this without any special effects was the camera was on one side of us, and then the other side where the camera couldn't see was we put our arms in a loop, right. you know, like where we had our hands on our hips. And like, and then uh, Jason basically had to take a real machete and get it through that loop Ooh. like he's stabbing us. Wow. So plus, think about this. He's got a mask on with one eye, <laughs> he, it's a real rusty machete, and if he misses and he has no depth perception, there's no acting here. He is literally shish kebabbing us. <laughs> so when he does it, there's not a lot of acting going on. Both of us are going, ah! <laughs> No pressure, right? <laughs> Little side note. No pressure at all. And they put all this, uh, and they got, I guess, uh, oh, that's what happened after the movie got, they, the, uh, um, unfortunately for me, the uh, the uh, movie board felt that this they finally came down on them for so much violence and they had to cut it. But what was really cool is they filled my mouth and uh, Cindy's mouth with um, uh, fake blood, and then okay. they put a um, uh, a big porcelain screen. I mean, a big see-through screen. Uh, pardon me, that was my phone. A big <laughs> uh, screen where uh, we spit blood into the camera, basically, wow. which is really cool. But That's they got awesome. away from that. That would have been great. But anyway, yeah. I was thrilled. I was so excited because I wasn't kidding. I mean, I told McGoughlin that this was one of my biggest dreams. And, I, and I, you know, Jason and the whole nine yards right. was so cool. Have you seen any of the Friday the 13th before this one? Oh, yeah. Oh, awesome. yeah. I, you know, I remember uh, I, I was a kid when I saw the, the first one. And I, I absolutely am. Um, you know, I, I will say that uh, everyone says that the beginning of, uh, of six is one of the better ones. And I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's pretty good. 
Yeah. And, uh, yeah, go on. I'm sorry. No problem. Uh, what was Tom McLaughlin like as a director? Uh, just funny and <laughs> easygoing and, uh, um, athle- athleticism is not my strong suit. Mm-hmm. And so there's a scene where I have to run to get my girlfriend and get the sheriff as a work where I get to say that line. <laughs> and I just, you know, and I did not run like a guy was coming to kill me. I ran like, uh, um, uh, middle class Jewish guy from Chicago. <laughs> so, that's what I ran like. That's who I am. And, that's funny. Um, so he goes, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> you see, he's coming to kill you. You're racing through the forest. Okay, okay. Ru-, you know, and I, I was like uh, Kramer in uh, Seinfeld. Yes. He kept having to cut, cut. To run again, but this time you need to not look like the spaz you are, you know. So, <laughs> anyway, so he was a great director. He was fun, easygoing, made it painless, pardon the pun. And you know, and I got to know him having done the deaths. And so uh, he and I both were excited because it was a great opportunity for me, right? And uh, and and it was a nice nice moment for him. Awesome. Oh, and can I tell you a special? The other death, the special. Nothing yeah. worked that weekend on the special effects. Okay. The uh, drunk, what was his name again? I'm sorry. Martin. I, I met him, but I don't remember. Martin. Yep. He gets uh, a liquor bottle slammed into his throat. All right. And so the way they did that gag was they they uh, they had like these little plastic tubes behind him with a machine that would shoot out blood. Right. That's what was supposed to happen. But it was freezing at night there, and nothing worked. And they had fake throat around him with mm-hmm. you know bottle spigot sticking out of it. Right. So they literally had to do it old school. Everything, and that's again why Tom is such a good director. He just said, "Let's just do it this way." So they literally had two crew guys mm-hmm. at, at his feet. I mean, if you even noticed that when the blood and everything, it's you just—it's a tight shot. Right. They had two guys sitting at his feet with two gigantic plastic tubes. They hmm. poured blood into it, and then they sit there going, <sighs> you know, <laughs> and that didn't work for a long time. Because, you know, you got two guys blowing on a tube trying to get blood to shoot out. So, right. you know, it was oh all god. very old school. That's funny. Oh, my God. Uh, so what was it like working yeah. with C.J. Graham, who played Jason? Well, I just told you. He uh, he was really nice, but he sort of stayed to himself. And, and, and the problem was is he couldn't see uh. because of the uh, because of the mask. Mm-hmm. And he would complain about that. And so then when he macheted me, I'm not. A, I wasn't feeling real good about this. Right. <laughs> you know, right. So, uh, but he did it. So thank goodness. That's good, right? He did so, it right. I mean. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how long were you on set for while uh, filming? It was really cool. He he worked on his walk. You know, he had that military walk. Right. And, uh, everything was very specific, and and there was basically uh, Friday the Thirteenth Wrangler. They, I don't remember what they called that person, but. Mm-hmm. Somebody who was very exact about everything Jason did, okay. which I thought was very cool, because you know it was already six one. Yeah, exactly. That, that's. I mean, you always want to get that character to kind of move the way that Jason would actually move, because you know it's not like it's a different character every time. It's a different actor, but it's always that you know you want that Jason. Might be the first time Jason was an undead, but you want to get that. That's what the the fans really pick up on that. You know what I'm thinking. Because I remember it was Kane Hodder because I was, I, I'm thinking maybe, and I might be wrong, you'll have to ask uh, Tom, maybe he came in for that weekend shoot and the other guy wasn't available because I really remember it was Kane uh, what, Hodder. Really? So I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe, because the, cause if I'm not mistaken, he told me he had a uh, uh, military experience. I know, they, the I know he told me there, wasn't a, there was a guy before C.J. Graham who was Dan Bradley that did, the, that did a lot, the paintball scene. He might have done your scene as well. I don't remember if he mentioned that or not. Uh-huh. I know he I said, remember, But I will yeah. tell you that they, the guy did tell me he had military experience and they were very, you know, it's, it, when you do a commercial like for McDonald's, as yeah. an example, there is a McDonald's Wrangler, and that guy has a little McDonald's pinky ring. Okay. And he literally sits there and tells you how to hold the sandwich with the right fingers in the right place. The ketchup has to be coming out in a certain way. And it was the same thing with the uh, with the Friday the 13th guy. Okay. You know, he didn't, the ketchup had to be in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so how long were you on set for while filming Friday the 13th Part 6? Just a weekend, as, as I okay. said, it was just that weekend in, 
uh, in Hollywood because it was it was added on. Uh, right. So I was very very lucky on that. I was nice. really happy about that. Nice. So outside, I've done, I've done other movies and stuff. There's blood and stuff, but it. Right. Uh, uh, the only other one that I can think of that was really fun is I did a movie. Ah, uh, God, I can't remember. Dead, Dead on, I think. I don't remember. Anyway, I get punched in the face by um, Matt McCall, the guy who was in uh, Hand That Rocks the Cradle. Okay. And he missed and actually hit me in the nose. Ooh. And blood is just pouring out, Ooh. and the whole place is freaking, and I'm loving it. I'm going, <laughs> oh, so cool. <laughs> right. Oh my God. That was real fun. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So outside of Cin- uh, Cynthia Cania, did you uh, get to interact or meet any of the of the other actors that were part of the film? Well, yeah. If you in my scene, I'm uh, you know it's very different than all the other Friday the Thirteenth. I'm mm-hmm. in the forest with a girl in the middle of the night. We're about to have sex. You know. Right. Never. That's just so. <laughs> so we're doing our if you want to call it a sex scene. It's really you know very minor, but. Uh, Vinny uh, Gustafaro is her husband in real mm-hmm. life, and he plays the deputy in that movie. Right. So I don't know her from that. You know, we we come in there, and she got the role because uh, of Vinny, because you know she he, she she had met uh, Tom. Anyways, he's a scary dude, a really nice guy, but right. he's sort of a scary dude, and. You know, here I am having to make out with his wife, and he's just start standing around. It was not fun. I, you know, I was uncomfortable, oh, to say the least. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> he's a Chicago guy, so you, you, you can't be all bad. And uh, both of them were very nice, but I just, I, you know, right, <laughs> right. weirded me out. <laughs> so what was it like working with Cindy? Oh, she's very nice. Very awesome. nice. And, and like I said, she and I uh, were, you know, it was the middle of the night so it was very uh, exhausting in that respect but it was more we were completely freaked uh, you know when we got killed because we could have really been shish kebab right so she and I both and I got it first no did she get it first you got got it first yep (laughs) and uh, yeah so (laughs) So, was was there any like practicing for that scene at all well I told you the the they the problem is, is that because we were fighting daylight and the special effects, they just basically oh, had right. them try it once or twice between our arms, and right. they went, "Well, let's just do it." Right. Like, Praying for the best. <laughs> so, so there wasn't a lot of rehearsal for that because everything had to be, you know, we did all the stuff, the the pre stuff, but the murder was going to be the last thing we were shooting because of special effects. Right. And uh, and then there were no special effects except mm-hmm. for the. Uh, which I thought was really cool. I never knew that the the clear uh, plastic sheet that they put in front of the camera that then you spit blood all over. That was cool. That's that's awesome. Um, so the last question yeah. I got for you is: uh, Do you have any future projects or anything else that you would like to promote to our listeners? Oh, well, there's just porno. No, I get. <laughs> uh, there's a new show called uh, There's a new show called Broke on okay. uh, on CBS. And uh, I'll be, I have a little thing on that next week. Okay. And uh, you hear me on CBS, speaking of which, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then mm-hmm. there's a cartoon coming out on Netflix uh, for little kids called Monkey with a Tool Belt. <laughs> and uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm uh, the ostrich and the sand crab. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, but it, for horror uh, fans, uh, I did all those really cool movies. Uh, the you know I, I mentioned to you, Reanimator, Return of the Reanimator, yeah. uh, Trolls. Um, I did all those uh, those, and I put all the monsters and all the different uh, uh, alien voices of all those different things, and it was always a hoot. That's awesome. That is so awesome. And anybody that wants to find you, they can go. Is there anywhere that they can locate you and find out anything else that you're into after uh, this? In the alley? No. Uh, <laughs> RogerRose.com. That's no D. Don't put the D in there. RogerRose.com is where you can find me. Awesome. And then also, if you want to see what other uh, movies that he's in, post this interview. You can uh, find him on IMDb as well and see what else he's been up to. Uh, thank you, Roger, for your time. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure. And what's that behind you? (laughs) Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And you have a nice rest of your day. Have a great weekend and stay safe. Okay. Appreciate you thinking of me. Yep. Not a problem. Thank you again. (laughs) Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.